Welcome back to Huchos. Today on Huchos, I'm going to show you how to 3D print and assemble this. This is a 3D printable fitting that allows you to adapt any plastic bucket into a Beto bucket hydroponic system that you can use to feed yourself, your family, and your community. Okay, so it's absolutely no secret that I love Beto buckets. I love their simplicity. I love how productive they are. And I love how neat they can make your greenhouse. And once you've got the system set up, I love their running cost because perlite is cheap and the whole system itself is really easy to maintain. Basically, the only inputs are hydroponic nutrient, water, and perlite. The only problem I have with these systems is their availability. Now they can be expensive and they may not be available in your region for anywhere near a decent price. This is rather unfortunate. However, they are a very simple system. So as you can see, the way that this system works is the bottom fills up with nutrient, at which point the snorkel drains out the nutrient and down into an overflow pipe. The overflow pipe then runs back to a reservoir, which is pumped back up to the top and the cycle restarts. So it's a recirculating system. The plants use up the nutrient and the nutrient is topped up within the reservoir via a float valve or manually if you don't have a larger reservoir feeding your Beto bucket reservoir. Now, on the problem of the buckets, square buckets are not hard to find. These square buckets come from Big W, which is a large retailer in Australia, and they're just a normal heavy duty bucket that you could probably get anywhere in the world. I chose them because they're almost identical in size to a Beto bucket, which is also 12 litres. In fact, I think the Beto bucket is 11 litres and these are 12. These cost me $4 each, $4 a bucket, compared to the minimum price that I could find these for was $12.50. And they were unavailable at that price. The cheapest US price I could find was $42 for two of them, and that's in US dollars. You may be able to find them cheaper, I'm not saying you can't, but they are relatively expensive for what they are. So all we need to do to get from here to a Beto bucket is we need a snorkel. Now, that's where 3D printing comes in. This is a part specifically designed to seal around an existing square-faced bucket. We just have a nut, a thread, and a snorkel. And as you can see here, I've been quite busy printing off these snorkels so that we can put together our system today. Now, for those who are 3D printing these, you will need to print them standing upright with tree supports and supports only from the build plate. Internally, it will support as well as along the bottom of our piece. And you'll end up with a nice clean part that we can then use for our Beto buckets. If you do not have a 3D printer, you can use a friend's 3D printer, or there are maker spaces around the world in every city that allow you to go in with your design and they will help you through the process of printing out what you require. There are even spaces in public libraries these days. In their general printing services, sometimes they have 3D printers. So if you don't have a 3D printer, you can get the files from my Patreon and print them off. Okay, so to keep it nice and simple, all we do is we lay down our part onto a bucket, we raise it about 10 mil, and then we mark out where we're going to put our hole in the bucket. We then use a 29 millimeter hole saw. Now the 29 millimeters is because that is the hole size of the thread. So we start in forward and in reverse. and we get a nice clean hole in our bucket like so. Into that, our piece will slide and we can put on our nut at the back 
and we have our Beto bucket. If you are getting leaks from the front of this, you can just silicone around the internal part of this fitting, or you can add in a seal. Now these are just toilet seating washers and they will allow you to get a tool free seal on the Beto bucket if you like. So each of these will take about 80 grams of filament uh, and that is absolutely next to nothing. It just depends on how much your filament is costing you. So that's less than a dollar each for each one of these components. That makes the full cost of the bucket $5. <laughs> and that's Australian. So for you American viewers, $3.50. Now, if you have a hard time getting the parts together, just use some silicon spray. Silicon spray is a plastic lubricant. That is to say it lubricates plastic and it will allow you to thread the nut a lot easier once you get it started. And the reason it's a nut is because we can use tools on it. And now I can just go along and drill the rest of the buckets. Okay, all the buckets are now set up and ready to go. So we can now set up our system. All I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it to my existing Beto bucket system so that you can see that they work just as well as the regular Beto buckets. We just need to add in a little extra pipe for this corner. So here we've got a pipe which has 29 millimeter holes drilled out of it. It's a 40 millimeter pipe and I'm just going to lay it down here so that we have enough spaces to put the Beto buckets and the Beto buckets will just sit on the ground and the front of the pipes go straight into our return pipe, like so. Easy as that. And they say that out of necessity comes invention. I actually needed an end cap, and this is from my mini hydroponic system, my mini rain gutter grow system, hydroponic system that I built and time-lapsed. Um, and it's going to be my end cap. And the beauty of this arrangement is that you can actually have these buckets in front of each other. So, watch out buddy. Look at that tail. You love it, don't you? Another one. And the beauty of this system is that you can have buckets literally diagonally from each other. Whereas in the Beto bucket system, you have to have them staggered. I'll show you what I mean. As you can see here with the Beto buckets, you cannot have the Beto buckets as close together as you possibly can because they simply cannot fit onto the pipe. So they have to be staggered like this. But with these 3D printable style of Beto bucket, we can have these, depending on how you set up the pipe to accept the outlets, you can have these spaced as closely as you like. You can actually fit more of these per meter of greenhouse than you can with the original Beto buckets, which is pretty bloody cool. So yeah, just keep that in mind when you're spacing your holes in your return. You can have them closer than I have together and you can butt the buckets up against each other and you can also have them on the opposite side. Okay, so I'm now going to run my irrigation line and because I don't throw anything out, it's exactly the same irrigation line as in the Beto buckets behind me. It has four millimeter barbs coming out of it and that is going to be running along the top of my buckets. Okay, so I'm just gonna fold over the end like so and zip tie it. And I'm right now trying to figure out a better way of attaching this to the buckets. But for the meantime, I'm just going to zip around the handle on the bucket and I'll do that on a few of the buckets until I can figure out a way of connecting this in a less permanent fashion. But this will allow us to have the irrigation come across the front of the buckets. I'm gonna cut the line, put a T into our existing Dutch bucket line, like so. 
and then we can add in a piece connecting it to our existing irrigation system. Because I don't have this last one printed yet, I'm just going to connect up these two end four millimeter sections. And that means I won't get any leakage while I show you how the system runs. So I'm now gonna turn on the system. What we'll see is this whole system will turn on, but also these four millimeter barbs will shoot down into the buckets and we'll start to get the buckets filled. I'll show you that process now. So as you can see, all the four millimeter barbs are putting water into the system. So I'm just gonna let this fill and we'll see at what point the water gets up to. Um, this is actually interesting for me too because I wanna see how much uh, water is going to be just left in these buckets and essentially that will be anoxic. There, there won't be much root growth within that water level. The less, the more roots, but the less redundancy. Um, the more, the more redundancy, but less root space, oxygenated root space. Okay, so we're almost up to the point where it will start overflowing into the overflow pipe. Okay, so the level of water is exactly halfway up the return pipe hole, and there is no leaks. None of my return pipes are leaking, so you don't even need to seal these fittings. The fittings seal themselves, and that is actually really, that's really cool. Um, so no need for washers, no need for silicon. I'm going to see how it goes. I think this may be slightly too high. We don't really need that much redundancy, but it is nice to have, and we'll see how the plants react because I'm going to fill these right up with perlite. And once we've done a full grow, we can see how the roots have adapted to the full water environment at the bottom compared to the oxygenated space at the top. So let's fill these buckets up with perlite and plant some plants. Oof. I hope I've got enough because running low. Well, I've got enough for the functional buckets, which is good. And into these, I'm just planting some tomatoes. These ones I propagated under my DIY propagation shelving, which you can find in the video on the screen right now. And I'm just literally going to pop these top like that and there it is a DIY 3d printable Dutch bucket fitting so that you can adapt any bucket into a hydroponic system that can feed you and your family and your community all right well I hope you enjoyed this episode of who chose all of the 3d printable files can be found on my patreon it starts at three dollars a month and you have access to all of the 3D print files that have ever been featured on this channel, and I hope you enjoy them. Happy hydroponicking, and I'll see you next time on Who Chose.